So you're thinking about taking creatine. The good news is that it's one of the most well-researched and effective supplements. In this video, we will go into creatine's benefits, a few myths, and some potential negatives along with dosing and recommendations so you can determine if it's right for you. Let's get right into it. It's always good to start with what something is and what it does, so let's get a background on creatine. It's a natural source of energy that helps your muscles contract. It allows for a good reservoir of energy so your muscles can continue to work for you. And it can be formed from the amino acids arginine, glycine, and methionine in your kidneys and liver, but you can also get it from eating meat or taking a dietary supplement. Let's get into the benefits of creatine, and it has a good amount, so stay tuned. The first one we will start with is that it aids in muscle recovery. When you work out or do anything strenuous, your muscles will experience micro tears that eventually heal and make you stronger. Creatine aids in this process and will allow your muscles to recover faster. It's also been found to reduce muscle damage and stop inflammation and soreness after you exercise, so it's all around helpful for muscle recovery. Along with improved recovery, it also enhances performance, especially with short, high-intensity activities like weightlifting and sprinting. You can expect increases in strength and power, as well as a sped-up recovery time between your sets. This lets you do more volume during workouts, which will lead to more gains as the time compounds this. This is because creatine allows the cells to resynthesize ATP, which is what muscles use for energy. When I was taking creatine, I noticed that I was able to squeeze out more reps and had more energy during my workouts. Research has also shown that creatine can help prevent injuries. Studies show that athletes who took creatine experienced fewer musculoskeletal injuries and had quicker recoveries from their injuries. It was found that muscle atrophy was less when they were not using their muscles as well. Creatine seems like it can do everything because animal studies have shown that it can be neuroprotective. These studies were so interesting that the International Society of Sports Nutrition recommends that every athlete who participates in a contact sport take creatine due to its neuroprotective function against concussion and spinal injuries. Not only is it neuroprotective, but it also can help with cognition and memory. All these benefits make creatine seem like a cheat code, but one study showed that creatine helped reduce mental fatigue after sustained mental effort. It is generally recognized that it will enhance memory, especially in older adults. Creatine is well known to boost water content in muscle cells, and this improves cell hydration, makes cramps less likely, and also improves hydration, which is funny because creatine was initially thought to cause cramping. Muscle strains and tightness were also found to be decreased in athletes who take creatine. Supplementation helps athletes hyperhydrate and helps athletes train in the heat. Those are the main benefits of creatine, but over the years, some myths have developed that I will go into now. The first of these is kidney damage. You may have heard that creatine will damage your kidneys. I know that's one of the first things I was scared about when I first started taking it. This stemmed from some studies that were done in the late 90s. However, these studies ignored some crucial confounding factors. In healthy individuals, there does not appear to be any adverse effects from consuming recommended doses. One study put it best when it stated that if there was a link, we would see a large number of kidney damage in healthy individuals. There has been nearly 30 years worth of trials and there is no evidence that shows this. Another scary negative tied to creatine is baldness. This is due to a study that found higher levels of DHT in athletes taking creatine. Higher levels of DHT have been linked to hair loss and baldness. However, further trials have failed to show any clinically significant increase. I would say if you're prone to male pattern baldness or are anxious about balding, then maybe avoid creatine just to be safe. But if you're not an anxious person, the current data does not show any strong link to hair loss. Now that we touched on some common myths, let's talk about some negatives. The first one surprised me, but some research shows that creatine decreased VO2 max. However, it's important to note that VO2 max does decrease with weight gain, and weight gain is usually noticed when taking creatine. If you're an elite endurance athlete, you may want to reconsider supplementing or monitor your VO2 max more closely. The next one is GI discomfort. Creatine has been a culprit in disrupting the GI system, and it does cause bloating for some people. This effect is more pronounced when taking higher doses, but it's also important to remember to let creatine fully dissolve before taking it. You may also want a snack to go with it when you're taking it. Another negative that I'm going to put in here is when you stop creatine. 
When you stop, you'll usually notice that you have lower energy levels and your muscles may shrink. This can be a bit discouraging for some people. However, it does not take your body very long to reach pre-supplementation levels, with it usually being around 4-6 to six weeks. Let's talk about creatine dosing. Data shows that lower daily creatine supplementation dosing strategies of around 3-5 to five grams per day increase intramuscular creatine stores and provided all of the benefits that creatine offers. If you're doing a lot of intensive exercise though, I would lean more towards 5 grams. However, it does take around 4 weeks to reach the same saturation levels of 1 week of heavy loading, so if you need the results right away, then it may be best to load creatine. However, I would advise against this if you do not have to. If you do decide to use a loading phase, you should not take more than 10 grams at a time and should try to spread the doses throughout the day so you don't experience GI issues such as diarrhea. A loading phase is usually 20 to 25 grams a day for a week and then down to the maintenance dose of 3 to 5 grams a day. Creatine has been shown to be safe for short-term and long-term use, so you don't have to do a cycle. Timing during each day should not matter much. You can take it before or after a workout, but some studies do show that blood concentrations were increased around 3 to 4 hours after taking it. If you feel that creatine is right for you, I would recommend taking creatine monohydrate. It is the most well-researched and there is no evidence showing that any other form of creatine would be better. If you experience any weird side effects with creatine, be sure to stop and consult a healthcare professional. I hope that you learned something new about creatine, and if you did, please leave a like and subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching.